tonight we're going to continue talking about uh, we're going to continue talking about this imp this important relationship uh, that we have to ourselves. This really important relationship we have to ourselves. Um, if you would go with me to the book of Jeremiah, we're in Jeremiah chapter one. Jeremiah chapter one. And our title, I had a title written down and I changed it. Our title is, Who Do You Think You Are? Who do, who do you think you are? Jeremiah chapter one. And I'm going to read uh, just a few verses here. I'm in the CSB, got my CSB, if you've got, if you've got one of those. Uh, feel free to grab it. So Jeremiah chapter one, I'm going to read verses four through 10. Jeremiah one, four through 10. The word of the Lord came to me. This is, Jer this is Jeremiah speaking. Uh, the word of the Lord came to me. I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. But I protested, oh no, Lord God. Look, I don't know how to speak since I am only a youth. Then the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth for, for you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of anyone for I will be with you to rescue you. This is the Lord's declaration. Then the Lord reached out his hand, touched my mouth and told me, I have now filled your mouth with my words. See, I have appointed you today over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and demolish, to build and plant. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Father God, thank you for your word. Now allow it to, uh, to work in us by your Holy Spirit and show us things that we, that we didn't know that we needed to know. In Jesus' name, amen. Who do you think you are? So that is, that is kind of my summary of, of this little conversation between Jeremiah and God. You know, Jeremiah is God's prophet. And you can look, if you look just a, a little bit above uh, from verses one through three, it explains who Jeremiah is, when he lived. He was a prophet in Judah and spanned over uh, two different kings. And up until the point where they were taken into, uh, until the Israelites were taken into captivity. And he had, he had some things to say. They were God's words. They were the things that God gave him to say. And from, from just from what we see here, Jeremiah had an, an idea or an understanding of himself and who he was. And so when God called him to do a certain thing, he was like, uh, no, sir, um, I appreciate it. Like, it's cool and all, but, but see, I am me. And me does not do the things that you are suggesting I should be doing. And God said, don't say that about yourself. Don't say that about yourself. You, you're who I say you are. What I, what I love about, uh, one of the things I, I love about this, this scripture, if you read it in another translation, verse five says, before, or I knew you before I formed you in the womb. Um, now, I believe that this particular scripture has been co-opted by a particular uh, political movement because um, I don't believe that it means what it is suggested to mean in order to support a certain uh, worldview on a particular topic, which we could talk about, but we're not. Uh, but God says here, I, I, knew, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. Like before, here it says in the CSB, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. So this is prior to any, any formation in the womb. This is prior to, uh, this is prior to uh, uh, viability. This is prior to uh, becoming a fetus. This is prior to becoming a zygote. This is prior to fertilization. This is prior to the, the existence of, of two cells and two different human beings, even existing in those two human beings. Before I formed you, before I started to put you together, I had already chosen you. 
So this is God speaking to the to of not to he's speaking to Jeremiah, but about the spirit of Jeremiah because his spirit, his soul existed in in eternity. God created it. Jeremiah just wasn't aware of it. It's kind of bizarre to think like God knew me before I was I was made like before before. I was like before my mother was pregnant, God knew me and had a plan and a design for for my life and how it would go out. And and in spite of what I think about my existence, God already had some had made some decisions. I chose you before I formed you. I set you apart before you were born. So even if you want to get all the way up until like in the mother's womb, God had God did have a plan. I had a plan before any of that happened before before any of it before there was any flesh assigned to you i knew you i had a plan i chose you i set you apart and, and quite simply it just means that god knows us better than we know us god knows us better than we know us because he made decisions about us before before we were ever formed in the womb. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to chase the rabbit. The rabbit can run. I'm not going to chase that rabbit today. Then in verse six, we see that Jeremiah. Jeremiah protested. I, uh, oh, oh no, oh no, Lord God. Look, I don't know how to speak since I'm only a youth. So here. Jeremiah takes uh, takes something that is that is factual. He take I am a youth, and then he ties something else to it. I don't know how to speak because I am a youth, and and then God inserts the 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 gif or jif, however you say it. I don't care. The, the little no no correlation, no cor no correlation, sir. You not being able to speak and you being you. Don't say that you're a youth. He said, do not say I'm only a youth. You're going to go to everyone I send you to and you'll speak whatever I tell you. So God negates what Jeremiah thinks is not good enough about him. I don't know how to speak. It's because I'm a youth. Like God's going to accept like, oh, you know what? You're right. You're a youth and therefore I cannot use you. Or you are you, you are a Virgo and therefore I can't use you. You are a Libra and absolutely, therefore I cannot use you. I'm so glad you pointed that out, Jeremiah. I... How did I forget that? And so he says, don't say don't say that I'm a youth because that doesn't matter to me. And you saying I'm not able to speak. Well, that doesn't matter to me either because, well, you're going to say what I give you to say. So it doesn't matter what your abilities are. It doesn't matter what your proclivities are. It doesn't matter what, uh, what you think you're good at or what you're, what you're not good at. It doesn't matter what your personality type is because I'm going to do with you what I, I'm going to do with you what I'm going to do with you. And that's that on that. There is, uh, and I'll share the link, uh, or someone can grab the link and, and drop it in here, uh, this website called 16personalities.com. And this is, uh, it, there's like a, a little free test that you can take. It's based on the Myers-Briggs uh, personality profile. Many of you may have already done that. You, you may be aware of what your personality profile is. Um, and... Uh, I think it's helpful information. It's it's good to to have some idea about about who we are based on how we answer some questions. Now, again, this is just based on how we answer some questions. Doesn't mean that's how it shows up every single day in life. But I have consistently, I have been, and uh, hold on, let me make sure I get it right. Uh, I S T J. That's me. I S T J. And. I've gotten that answer for like forever. And on the I part, that's introvert. So the, the first letter, if you're familiar with this, is going to be either I or E. E is extrovert. I is introvert. I'm an introvert. I consistently have scored up until just recently, consistently scored on a 10 scale, like 10 out of 10 introvert. There's no ambiguity. There's a no ambervertedness about me. I am, I am a stone cold introvert. It doesn't matter when I've taken step over over the years, even before this website, uh, even before this website existed. 
or before I was aware of his existence. Like I've done this test like on paper with my therapist or, or, or in the back of a, a book that, I, that I've had where it's like, here, take this test and you learn about yourself. And here's the, I, I, yeah, introvert, 100%, all the way, forever, forever and always. One of the questions is after a long week, what's best for you, it's agree, disagree, and then, you know, kind of a sliding scale. After a long, busy week, the best thing for you is to, is to be in a lively social, uh, social atmosphere. Strongly disagree, vehemently disagree for me. After a long, busy week, the last thing that I want to do, like me, myself, personal, the last thing I want to do is see anybody, like anybody at all, except for my wife. Like I always want to see my wife, no matter what. My kids, 70-30, 70-30. I won't tell you which which way it goes. But I am like to my core, I just like I'm I'm good being by myself. When when the pandemic hit in in 2020 and it was like everyone needs to stay at home, I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? Um it's like, okay, well, sorry for the rest of you who really enjoy being outside and breathing each other. I never liked breathing your air anyway. You've always been too close, in my opinion. We've needed to social distance for as, for as long as, as I have been aware. Um, but then God has, over the years, also put me in places and in positions where I've had to work with people. And, and not just work with people, but like lead people. And, and had to, uh, like in music ministry, I've had to work with a band. I have had to, uh, I, I have been a minister of music at one point and I had to lead the praise team, the band. I also had, I was responsible for the choir and I was even responsible for some of the other, uh, the other worship arts ministries, the drama and the dance. And for a person who prefers to be by themselves, like to, to lead a large group of people is, that doesn't, that doesn't fit. Like, see, if God had said to me a while back, like, hey, you are, you are going to be in front of lots of people. You're going to have to work with lots of people and different personalities, and you're going to have to draw out of them uh, things that they might not have been aware where it, it were, they were capable of. And you're going to have to teach them, and they're going to need to learn from you, and they're going to have to trust you in order to learn from you. And I'd have been, I'd have said what Jeremiah said. Oh no, Lord God, <laughs> I believe you've delivered this to the wrong address. There's one street over, there's another, the way they did the address is one street over, there's another house with the same house number, but it's a different street name. You may have gotten it mixed up. This goes one street over because you, the way you made me, the way I am, surely no, Lord God. I am, I am an introvert. So like I said, I am, I'm an ISTJ and, uh, I'll, I'll share my, on our platform, I'll share uh, what, what it says about me, and you can tell me if you think it's, it's true or not, um, and maybe share yours too after you do it, and, you know, let, let us, let us know what you think, but something interesting that happened, uh, I went back and, and, and took the test again, right, and, you know, I've been, since the last time I had taken it, I've, I've been, I've been through so much, I had children, and we've moved, and just a whole bunch of stuff, and so, and I've, I've been through therapy, and some, some other coaching, and like, you know, well, I can change, I can progress, and so I took it, and I got a, I got a almost entirely different result, and I was like, this, this can't be right, I looked at it, and I started reading through it. I'm like, this sounds like this sounds like a type of person like maybe I would like to be, but this doesn't this doesn't seem to to this, mm, let me do it again. So I went I went to a different browser so there weren't any cookies or anything, and and I took it again. But this time I was a little bit more conservative in my responses, and instead of thinking about stuff, I just went with the what comes first. Whenever, whenever you're taking a test, just stick with the stick with the answer that comes up first. Whenever you, especially when you're guessing, if you're guessing, and you've guessed 
like uh, I think the answer is B. Don't second guess yourself. Just if you're guessing, just go with the first guess because your second guess isn't going to be any better than the first guess. The, but uh, this time when I took it, I I said I'm gonna just go with the answer that that just feels most natural uh, immediately. Not well, what would I like to be? Or well, I have ADHD, so what does that actually? Uh, how does that work out? And, mm, forget all of that. What what just what just feels right? And then I got the same result that I've always gotten, ISTJ. And so I went back and I looked at the other one that I, had, that I had taken just a few minutes earlier and I realized the way I was answering the questions was, was a little bit more, a little bit more liberal, a little bit more based on what I think I, what I think I ought to be like, this is the person I'm trying to be. This is, yeah, I, I could do this. You know, when, when another person is crying that it, I feel empathy and I sort of feel like crying too. I don't, I, I don't. And that's okay, because some of you probably don't, like you see another person crying, it's like, wow, I feel bad for them. That must, must really hurt on the inside, but it doesn't bring tears. And then there's some of us who you see another person cry and you don't know what happened, but you just, oh my gosh, like life is hard and I feel it. Uh, but what I, what I had gotten the first time I took it, given the answers that I felt like maybe I should have given the person I'm trying to be was, was I, uh, INFP. Now, mind you, I'm ISTJ, but what I got was INFP. The only thing that stayed the same was the I. Like, I'm an introvert. No matter, no matter how I think I ought to answer the questions, I, I'm still going to just be an introvert at heart. And when I spend a lot of time with people, my battery still runs out, and I'm going to still want to just pull away and... I, I, let me show you something. For, for a lot of people who are introverts in a, in a crowded space, when you see them like this, they're not being rude. They're trying not to be rude. Because at this point, I'm not like tired of the, the people. I'm just tired of I'm tired of people, not the people, like not you personally. I'm not tired of you, just the, the idea of people. And so rather than being rude, I'm just going to come to myself and maybe recharge and then, and then be able to re-engage a little bit. But the other stuff, the NFP, I thought this, uh, this was so interesting to me because my wife, last time she took, uh, she took this profile test. Uh, she is an ENFP. I'm ISTJ. We are exact opposites from a Myers-Briggs personality profile perspective. My wife and I are exact opposites. And they say opposites attract, but opposites also attack. I heard somebody else say it and it rhymes. And it also makes sense because there's going to be a, a pulling and a tugging. Like I'm an introvert. No, I don't want to go anywhere. And she wants to go places and talk to people and meet people. And, and I'm rude because I won't talk to people. And why didn't you, why didn't you talk to the husband? Because wives sometimes will do this thing where they, they do husband play dates. So the wives will get together and bring the families and like, oh, our husband should talk. And so so, bro, yeah, what's good? And that's it. Like, we've connected because we already know, like, our wives dragged us here and we connect on everything else without talking about it. But there's these, you know, this pulling and tugging. But then I, I, I got INFP. I'm like, wait a second. My wife is NFP. So did I change? Or are there parts of her that are rubbing off on me? Do I feel compelled to be the way she is? Like, I, I don't have an answer for this. It's just, it's like, wow, this is really interesting. When I, when I try to, you know, really I was answering outside of myself. It, it, I, I was a little bit more, I was more like her. My point in sharing that is one, these tests can be manipulated. You can answer any type of way so that you can get the, uh, so you can get the, the, the INTJ. Everybody wants to be an INTJ because that's the most rare. Uh, the, the fewest percentage of the population are INTJ. So when everybody says they're INTJ, you can rest assured that most of them are not telling you the truth. Um, they just took the test a few times to get the, the answers that make them rare. Um, if that's if you're an INTJ, I'm not talking about you personally. I'm talking about other people who who profess to be that. But these tests can be manipulated, and so can we. Like 
like who 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 I who do I really think I am? When I took the test the first time earlier today, when I took it the first time, I was I was answering it to and like yeah I could see that. Do you like going to to art museums? Like yeah I could I could see me liking going to an art museum, but that's not really the answer. The true answer for me is like dead in the middle. Like I don't know. I can't say I disagree, but I definitely don't have any like are there going to be other people there that weighs into whether or not I like the art like if there's going to be other people there then no I don't like going to an art museum but but there there are little things that are going to that can influence the way that we might that we might present ourselves or or the way that we might be or think that we are it, it, a lot of times we will a lot of times we will do things based on our environment. And so we will, we will act, we will behave, present a certain way based on our environment, based on the people who are around us. And, and what is everybody else doing? But is, is, is that who I think, is that really who I am or is that just who I think I am? You know, there's been, a, there, was, there was a time when, when nary a week went by that I did not go to somebody's happy hour. Does that mean that I'm an extrovert? Absolutely not. I was doing what everybody else did. I would have been perfectly fine to be at the house. And quite frankly, the house is a safer place to be. But I was doing what other people did. Like if I'm going to get along in this work environment, then I got to go and do what everybody else does so we can see each other like inebriated and like all the, you know, all the laughing, all that stuff. And then, you know, you come back Monday and there's a story and all that stuff. Like we're connecting nothing to do with the actual work we have to get accomplished. But, you know, I, I lean towards that. And I, that's, that's what I do because of the environment that I'm in. Or I just stick to who, I know myself to be. I stick to this. We sometimes, for some of us, taking tests like these, like personality profiles, or see what your love language is, or or what your what your sign is, and the rising moon and the setting star. I don't know, but whatever it is, like we get it, and then we lock into it because that's what it said. That's the website said that I am this way. Therefore, this is how I am. This is who I think I am. In our relationship, like that is our relationship to ourselves. There, there's a way that we, there's a way that we are, and then there's a way that we think we are. And, and sometimes there's conflict between the way we truly are and the way that we, the way we think we are. Peer pressure will cause us to think, or at least to act like we're a certain way. Anybody, did anybody when they were, uh, when you were in school, like in elementary, high school, any school, you went off to college and there was a certain way of being that was, that was smiled upon rather than frowned upon. And it's like, okay, I think I can get with this. And, and you began to like shape yourself into the type of person who got invited places or the type of person who got to sit at the, at the, the cool kids lunch table, right? There, there were things that we would do to morph ourselves, and, and is it is this is this really is this really who I am? Is it when you look back, is that really who you were? Like, who, who did you think you were, and who do you think you are now? What God says, what God is, says here to to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter one, he basically says, "Who do you, who do you think you are?" Like, I'm the one who made you. And I had already made some determinations about how to use you before any of your physicality had began to manifest. Like, don't tell me that you young. I don't care nothing about that you young. I came, God said, I came to you when I came to you. I came to you when I came to you because this is the time for me to come to you. Because this is when I need you to say what I got, what I got for you to say. Don't tell me about, don't tell me about your Myers-Briggs personality profile. Don't, don't tell me about your, your fire sign and ask you about that. See, our relationship to ourselves, what we believe about ourselves, who we know ourselves to be, can, can oftentimes, is oftentimes in direct opposition to who God has called us to be. And we have to get out of who we, who we think we are or what the test says that we are.
or what our birth date and which hemisphere we were born in and at what time, whatever that determines about us, that's just, that, that's baseline. Which, whatever you use to determine who you are or who science says that you are or who astrology says that you are, even, even who church says that you are. Because listen, when I say when I say church, I don't mean I don't mean big C church. I mean, I mean, I mean us and I mean, church like Christianity. Because Jesus didn't know anything about Christianity. He was Christ, and he had and he had had and has followers. So whatever Christianity has has said, oh, this is what you should be. This is how you should be. You are, you you want to be, you are a chase person. You you believe that you should put here, wear this ring, put on this ring. I know you're not get married to Jesus and you're going to put on this ring and you will have, you will have no, uh, you will have no earthly physical desires. And we, and we start to start to believe that like, yeah, I have no earthly physical desires that makes me holy. And then other people like are human and we see them and now we're judging them because like, whoa, what are you doing? Acting like a human. What are, you, what are you doing not being as holy as me? Did you did you not make a vow? Are you not married to Jesus? There, there are these, these things, these ways that we're sometimes taught to be. And that ain't who we really are. That's... That's not who we really are. I love what another prophet said in the book before in, in Isaiah, uh, I, I think it's chapter six. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it's, this is the, the, the little portion that a lot of us are familiar, familiar with. It was the year that King Uzziah died and I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Uh, and the train of his robe filled the temple with glory and the and the the angels flew back and forth singing holy 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 uh and 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 then he he said like there was a little exchange and Isaiah was like no nope, not me same thing Jeremiah like let me just pause right here everybody ain't a prophet everybody ain't called to preach Everybody is not called to start a church. Everybody's not called to start a ministry. Not everybody needs a YouTube channel. Not everybody has to have needs to have a blog. Not everyone is called to be a TikToker or or it, not everyone is called to be a social media influencer. Like not everybody is called to do the same thing. And while I'm on that, not everybody needs to needs to offer paid subscriptions on their Instagram because I will not be subscribing to your Instagram. Not everybody's called to that. And, and when we look at Jeremiah, when we look at Isaiah and God says, hey, you're my prophet, both of them are like, <laughs> you must have the wrong person. Isaiah says, I am, a, I am a man of unclean lips and I come from people of unclean lips. Like have, kind of the same thing Jeremiah says, but in a different way. Like, have you heard, have you heard me talk? Moses, another one of God's prophets. Moses says the same thing when God calls him. I, my mouth. But I, 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 I have a problem with, with, I have a problem with speaking. Okay, take Aaron with you. He'll do the speaking for you, but you're still my prophet. It's always, it's always about my mouth. It's always, isn't that something that, thank you, Holy Spirit. Like it, it's always about my mouth. I was, it's always, the reason I can't, God, I can't be nobody's pastor because I'm critical. I am highly critical of other people. If you look it up, like I'm a Virgo, it says so right there. I am highly critical of people. I am an ISTJ. You know what that J stands for? Judging. I can't do this, but the wet my mouth, my mouth, my mouth. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And God says, don't worry about your mouth. To Jeremiah, he says, eh. I'm going to put the words in your mouth. To so Isaiah, he says, uh, he, the angel comes and brings a, a hot coal from, from the, the fire, from the altar, and puts it on his lips, and like, boom, I burned all of that out. Burned it with fire. To Moses, he said, your brother will go. He'll do the talking. God has a solution for, for all of our little excuses based on you know, the way we are. 
It's like, okay, that's the way you are, bet. Here's the solution for that. I'm gonna fix it. So if Jeremiah, if Jeremiah doesn't know how to speak, according to Jeremiah, according to Jeremiah, Jeremiah doesn't know how to speak. And God's response is, you will speak whatever I tell you. Like, God, I thought you were a loving God. You don't speak what I, you don't speak what I tell you to say. You don't know how to speak. I'll give you the words. And so now your little personality profile that tells you that you're not a public speaker, that tells you that you prefer to be on the sidelines. Nope, you're going to go out there. You're going to, you're going to do what I, you're going to do what I called you to do. You're going to be who I've called you to be. Oh, but, but no God, you know, who else said, uh, we, we looked last week at, uh, in Job, Job, uh, uh, 38. We looked at a little piece of that. I want to, I want to show you what, what it says at the beginning of, of, of chapter 38 in Job when like God has listened to all of this going on, carrying on, he says to Job, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. He said, who is this who obscures my counsel with ignorant words? Get ready to answer me like a man. When I question you, you will inform me. Another translation, basically, Get dressed and stand and step to me like a man. You, who has something to say to me? Who, who is this who, who, who darkens my counsel? I think the ESV says it that way. I'll ask you questions and you tell me, since you know so much. As we said, verse four, where were you when I established the earth? Tell me that. Where, where were you on the night, day? Well, there, I guess there was no night day. You couldn't tell me that because I made the night and the day. So tell me if you have understanding. Who fixed his dimensions? Certainly you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? What supports its foundation or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Like for filth, God reads them, God reads Job for filth. Like where were you? Because we don't, we, we don't know. Like, who, like who, who, who do we think we are? Who do I think I am to tell God how I am? I'm not saying that, that these things are not useful or helpful. They're absolutely useful and helpful for, for understanding who we are and, and understanding you know, our relationships to other people. Like if I am an ISTJ and my wife is an ENFP, that's, those things are helpful to know because we, we will look at the same thing and we'll see it differently. And it's helpful to know that. It doesn't mean I have to see it the way she sees it. It doesn't mean that she has to see it the way I see it, but it's helpful for us to know that when we look at the same thing, we see it, that we see it a little differently. That's helpful to know. But what's more important is what does God say? How does God see it? How, do, how, does, God, how does God see it? See, one person uh, who gets upset and, and may be prone to, to acts of violence, like physical violence. And another person like me, I'm not gonna say or do nothing to you, but in my mind, oh my goodness, in my mind, it's like a video game. Like you, oh, I wish I could, oh, I would, mm, mm, they have no idea. I, listen, it's, it's bad. But one person expresses it outwardly and the other person expresses it only inwardly. But Jesus said, if you hate your brother in your heart, that's, just, that's murder. That's one and the same. So, so what is the perspective that God takes? If we look at, and we looked at a little bit last week, uh, Galatians chapter five, where the fruit of the spirit are a little further up, I think like starting at verse 16, it, it talks about works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh are easy. They're obvious. Those are the things that come natural. Lying comes natural. Like, am I going to get in trouble for this? Lie. That's easy. 
that's that my personality profile says that I'm gonna lie if I'm put in if I'm in a corner. If I'm backed into a corner, I'm a lie. Someone else's personality profile says if I'm backed into a corner or or, or their, their astrological sign says if I'm back to a, back into a corner, I'm a fight and I'm a ain't nobody gonna be left standing. But what does God say? What are the fruit of the spirit? The way that we naturally are is just that. The way that we naturally are, born into sin. And we need, and we need Jesus. We need, we need Jesus. Because like it says in Romans chapter five, we're unable to save ourselves. We're not good enough. We cannot produce for ourselves the goodness necessary in order to be righteous and to have fellowship with God. Fellowship with God was broken because of sin. And so the ways that we naturally are, whether it's your sign, your personality profile, even our love languages, just because I communicate, love communicates for me in a, in a certain way, that doesn't make me right. It doesn't make me right. And, and I am someone who who used to believe that the way that I communicate love is, is the right way. Like, wait a minute, like looking back, that makes absolutely no sense. But I really thought that. Like, well, my, mine, is, mine is acts of service. That's, one of, that's my number one, acts of service. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you that I love you. My wife says words of affirmation. I used to think, I used to think that words of, words of affirmation people were like little weaklings. Like you need somebody to tell you, you need somebody to tell you about yourself. Like you don't have enough confidence on your own. The whole time being totally insecure myself. Like you need, you need someone to tell you how many times a day you need to hear this. I would rather, I'd rather show you. Well, that ain't how they get, that ain't how they feel it. You can show them all day, but you're not communicating the way they need to communicate. It doesn't make me right. The only thing that can make us right is the Holy Spirit. Jesus makes us right. Jesus died, and that's what makes us right. We have the Holy Spirit, and that's how we're able to be right. That's how we're able to become right. That's how we're able to have the fruit of the Spirit produced in our lives. Because there are some things about me being, uh, being introverted or, or sensing or, or thinking or judging. There are some things about that that don't work in every situation that God calls me into. And so sometimes I have to come out of that. And rather than being a sensing person, I need to feel. In my personality profile, if I, if I just stick with that, it's not gonna allow me to do that. And, and, and that's me placing limitations on what God is able to use me for because of some answers to a test. But what, what God says here to Jeremiah, do not say, I am only a youth. And you can cross out youth and you can put a blank there. You don't have to physically cross it out in your Bible, but put whatever there. Do not say that I am. Da, 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 da. For you will go to everyone I send you to and speak whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you to rescue you. This is the Lord's declaration. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and told me, I have filled your mouth with my words. Whatever God has called you to, whatever assignment you have, in this season in life, assignments can change, but whatever assignment he has given you, he, he equips us with what we need for the assignment. For Jeremiah, you're going to be my spokesperson. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Maybe you're a writer. He's going to put his words in your pen or in your keyboard. Maybe, maybe you are, maybe you're supposed to sing. He's going to put his voice in, in your vocal cords, and, and it's his breath that is going to cause the sound to come out. And he's the one who has control over, every, over everybody's ears anyway. I, 
I used to lead praise and worship. And at one point, like I had sing and all that stuff. And I think I'm a decent singer. I don't think I'm a good singer, but, but people would, would say that it sounded good as a musician, as a keyboard player. I think I'm good, but not great. But people would say like, Oh, it was great. And, and I, I decided it's one of two things and it could be both. Like maybe I'm better than I think I am, but also it was like, I know the mistakes I made, but you didn't hear them. And so God, I believe, has the ability to take whatever comes out of my vocal cords and into a microphone and out of a speaker, and he's able to shift it in the air before it touches everybody's ears. See, it, all I have to do is make myself available to do what God said to do. I'm supposed to sing, then sing. I'm supposed to play an instrument, play an instrument. I'm supposed to speak, then speak and, and trust him to to put the words in to put the to put the content in you're a content creator none of us are content creators none of us are content creators we simply produce what god has put inside of us but we have to we, we have to make ourselves available for that jeremiah was available for that verse nine then the lord reached out his hand touched my mouth and and told me, I have now filled your mouth with my words. See, I have appointed you today over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and demolish, to, to build and plant. Who do you think? God says, I don't care who you think you are. I know who I, know who I made you to be. And, we, and we, we need to have awareness of the baseline of who we are but that should not limit us in what we are able or willing to do that God calls us to.